Hello and welcome to a tutorial on diode clampers. Okay, so the clampers, as you can see here, represent certain electronic circuits which have two types of function. One, they behave as DC restorers. Okay, and also level shifters. Okay, so now just in order to summarize the clampers, what they do is they provide a DC reference voltage to any kind of input AC signal and in doing so they just shift this input AC signals level to either the positive or the negative voltage levels. So they are termed both as DC restorers and level shifters. So basically due to this type of function they find application in wave shaping and TV receiver circuits and so on. So basically depending upon their function the diode clampers can be divided into two categories. First is the positive clampers in which the input AC signal is shifted to positive voltage levels and we have the negative clampers where the input AC signal is coupled with a or rather provided with a negative reference voltage and shifted to the negative voltage signal levels okay so having said that we just move on to the circuit of a positive clamper in order to understand how it works okay so in the circuit of a positive clamper we have a series capacitor connected to a diode right and we have a resistance RL which represents the load resistance across the diode and this terminal as you can see here is grounded okay so let this terminal connected to the capacitor C be called terminal 1 and this one to the anode of the diode be termed as terminal 2 okay apart from that let us call the capacitor C in the diode let this be called D okay so now we have an input AC signal to this circuit of ours okay so here we have the input AC signal so here we just assume the AC signal oriented somewhat this way in order to facilitate our understanding of this topic a little better okay and with green I show you or rather I draw the graph of the output so kindly bear with me it takes some time to draw this thing okay so I guess I'm not making you bored right so I'm almost there so yeah that's it so I have made div divisions of the various half cycles of the input signal voltage okay and now whenever the first half cycle of the input voltage arrives at the input of this circuit what happens is the polarity of the terminal 1 and just before that I want to mention that the terminal 2 is grounded at 0 volts so the signal is primarily you know applied at terminal 1 across terminals 1 and 2 okay so whenever the first half cycle arrives at terminal 1 we have a negative voltage input file the voltage at 2 since it's at 0 volt is comparatively positive with respect to that at 1 so the diodes anode getting a comparatively positive voltage the diode is forward biased and therefore it starts to conduct a current I during this phase okay and that charges the capacitor with a polarity of plus and minus oriented somewhat this way so let the peak value of the voltage at the input or rather in the input signal be VP 
So the capacitor charges with a voltage Vp across it having the polarity as shown in the diagram. Okay. So during this phase, as you can see here, that the diode conducts, okay, and since the diode conducts, it behaves primarily as a short circuit element, and due to which the capacitor charges and stores most of the charge. And since the diode behaves as a short circuit element, we get no voltage across the diode and hence no voltage output across the load resistance. Okay, so we get no voltage output across the load resistance. So, in the first half cycle, what we have is there is no output, so the output voltage remains zero. Okay, so now let the second half cycle arrive. Now in case of the second half cycle, the polarity across terminals 1 and 2 changes. So terminal 1 is now comparatively positive with respect to terminal 2, which can be regarded as comparatively negative. Okay, So now the anode of the diode gets a comparatively negative voltage compared to that at terminal 1. So the diode primarily remains an open circuit element or rather it starts behaving as an open circuit element since it gets reverse biased okay so during this phase no current through the diode flows okay so now basically the voltage or rather the input voltage that's being available at the terminals 1 and 2 flow through to the load resistance or rather appear across the load resistance since the diode behaves as an open circuit element along with the peak voltage that had the capacitor charged in the previous half cycle. So the output voltage during this half cycle is the input voltage signal Vi plus the capacitor's stored voltage that's Vp. So now as we said that the peak value of the input voltage signal is Vp. So for or rather if we just uh, assume that on the basis of considering the calculation on the basis of the peak voltages, let's take the peak voltage of the input signal as Vp. Okay, So we get an output voltage of 2 Vp. Right? So let this level over here in the output graph represent the voltage level 2 Vp and from this discussion we can conclude that our output graph oscillates around the levels 0 on the negative side and 2 Vp on the positive side. So our wave might look somewhat like this. Okay, that's it. Bingo. So that's our wave, or rather our output signal as we obtained from the clamper circuit. And as you can see clearly in the graph that the output voltage level has been shifted to the positive voltage level, that is at level Vp. Okay, it's shifted by a voltage level plus Vp okay to the positive voltage levels from the zero voltage levels as it was before. Okay, so here we can see how a positive clamper behaves and shifts signals to the positive voltage levels. Okay, so now what we have remaining is the negative clamper. Okay, so let's just quickly go through the negative clamper. Oopsie. <clears throat> so here we have the negative clampers. Okay. Let me just change the color to draw the circuit. Okay, so here, so like the circuit in case of positive clampers, we have another series capacitor connected to a diode, right? And across the diode we have a load resistance RL. Okay, this end is grounded. Okay, right. 
So let this terminal connected to the capacitor be termed as terminal 1 and that to the cathode of this type be termed as terminal 2. Okay, the capacitor let this be called as C and the type be known as D. And we shall have our output voltage across RL. Okay, that's impressive. So notice the two pictures over here. In case of the positive clamp where the diode was connected with the anode to the ground, while here we have the diode connected, in case of negative clampers, we have the diode connected with its cathode to the ground. But the way in which the diodes are connected in these two types of clampers are just reverse of each other. So basically keeping that in mind, let us assume an input signal, an input AC signal falling at the inputs to this circuit. Okay, so here we have our input AC signal that looks somewhat like, yep, like this. So it's a sinusoidal wave as we can see. So in green I represent the output graph. Okay, so here are the divisions for the half cycles and I'm almost there. Okay, that's done. I just change the color. Okay, so here's our input voltage signal and this is our output voltage signal. So let's just imagine that the peak value of our input voltage signal be VP as before. So based on that fact, we can just discuss the characteristics or rather how the circuit behaves. Okay, so when the first half cycle arrives, at terminal 1, we have a positive voltage and terminal 2 being set to the ground voltage remains comparatively negative. Okay. So during this half cycle, since the cathode of the diode experiences a comparatively negative voltage compared to that of terminal 1, so the diode becomes forward biased and conducts. So a current through the diode starts flowing and as a result, the capacitor gets charged to the peak value of the input voltage signal. Okay, so which is of course VP. That's it. Fine. Now this current flowing through the diode, you know, just renders the diode as a nothing more than a short circuit element. So at the output we have no output voltage. So the output voltage during this half cycle is zero. Okay, so we have no output voltage during this half cycle. Okay. Now let the second half cycle arrive. So the second half cycle, as we can see here, the terminal 1 becomes comparatively negative or rather the negative uh, voltage applies to terminal 1 and with respect to terminal 1, the terminal 2 remains comparatively at a positive voltage and this time, since the cathode of the diode experiences a comparatively positive voltage with respect to the terminal 1, so the diode goes into the reverse voltage or rather into the reverse bias mode and that renders the diode or rather that makes it behave as an open circuit element. So due to that the diode doesn't conduct anymore and behaves as an open circuit element and as a result the charge stored in the capacitor that's the peak voltage VP with its negative polarity at or rather towards RL appears across the load resistance as an output voltage along with the input voltage which is also negative and appearing across RL. So the output voltage during this stage in our circuit is minus VI plus minus VP. Okay, so let us consider only the peak value of our input signal so we have minus VP so that's minus VP so we have minus 2 VP okay just let me write it below this thing right this was VP so we get minus 2 VP so let me just change the color in order to depict the output graph so as we see here that our output varies within the limits of 0 and minus 2 VP. So here we have our output voltage that looks somewhat like, oopsie, 
somewhat like this okay okay extending the divisions it looks somewhat like this right that's it okay so here we can see that the whole input voltage has shifted downwards towards the negative voltage region as it had the reference voltage of zero volts in the previous state okay as it was used or rather as it was accepted as the input and now after the output signal arrives we get this same input signal shifted to a different voltage level altogether which is minus vp and its peak remains at minus 2 vp and based on this graph we can understand how a negative clamper is able to shift an input signal from its zero voltage reference level to a negative reference voltage level okay so due to this property of clampers they are used in pretty much all types of wave shaping and level shifting circuits concerned okay they're used in tv amplifiers receivers and many more other such applications that require certain characteristics of operation okay so having said that we come to the end of our tutorial on the diode clampers hope you've enjoyed it thank you